Jason, do you know a little car company called Ford Motors? Huh. It's a little startup in uh, America, right? Yes. Yes, you're <laughs> right. It's a little startup. So the thing is, Ford has been pricing its vehicles higher. Specifically, it's Ford F-150 Lightning EV and pricing it as much as $10,000 more. Have you heard about this? Uh, not really, actually. Uh, it does seem kind of crazy. I've heard that people weren't really interested in buying the F-150 Lightning. Yes, because we did a story on this before about their manufacturing and the Ford CEO coming out and saying that the consumer will demand how much vehicles are being bought. Mm. The, but the thing is, with this, by the way, Ford Motors is increasing the price of some of its 2020 Ford F-150 Lightning models while lowering the cost of its most expensive models. So Wait, so the entry ones are more expensive than the... Yes, yes. The, <laughs> the entry ones are going to be more expensive and then the higher price ones are going to be a little lower. The thing is, the new starting price for the Ford F-150 Lightning will range from 54900 uh, for the entry level one yeah. to about 92000 for the premium <laughs> black trim. That's expensive. That is way. very expensive. I mean, bo- even the entry level model is like $52,000. That's, like that's a luxury car. Yeah, entry level, yeah. Entry level luxury car. $50,000? Yeah. That's so much money. Yeah, I mean, we're not in the market for these. Yeah, we're not <laughs> in the market for these, but I'm just like, saying. Who's buying this? Yeah, who is buying this? Um, the thing is, the price adjustment comes mm-hmm. as EV companies attempt to balance the slower than expected consumer demand mm. um, with profits. Mm. Yeah, this is exactly what we were mentioning earlier and the story that we did before because Ford itself had uh, stopped uh, stopped construction on a new uh, manufacturing for its uh, EV vehicles. And that's what the, why the CEO said it's like this is this is um where the consumer is demanding the demand for electric vehicles and if the demand's not there they're not going to be producing as much. So, Mm -hmm. and EVs are like getting bigger. There's more players in the EV space now more than ever. And there's going to continue to be all these players too. So it is very telling of Ford increasing its entry level models um, because maybe the demand's not there, but the customer is willing to pay the price for an EV truck. I mean, I think at that point they're positioning their vehicle, the F-150, to be more competitive because I do know the other vehicles are pretty expensive when it comes to similar trucks like the Rivians are, are pretty expensive. The cyber trucks pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you wanted like a cyber truck or something like other ones, some of them are have a long wait list or at least the cyber truck does at this point. So if you wanted to get an electric truck more like rapidly, you're going to probably have to get, a Ford, yeah. A Ford or maybe like a used used car. Yeah. I do have a couple more things to say. Mm-hmm. But before that, I wanted to say that if you like interesting content like this, consider subscribing. We put out interesting videos like this daily. And we have a library of over 200 videos closing in on 300. So if, if, you, um, if you like any of this type of content, consider subscribing. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. And it only takes a second. Um, I have the other thing I wanted to say about this is that Ford has also changed its prices on other vehicles, elect other electric vehicles. Oh, okay. What yeah. other electric vehicles does it have? The Mach E. So the thing is, yes, they lower the price on the Mach E um, based on the consumer demand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wait, actually. I think they, they said they changed the price, but I think they lowered it yeah, on the Mach-E. Mm-hmm. It, but it's crazy that they're even doing that in the first place because like, they, they're really shifting to the customer demand. They're, yeah. It's very like... it's th- These cars are very... Um, yeah, I guess it's just the man's not there for these vehicles, which is no. kind of crazy to think about. No, it's, I don't think it's crazy at all to think about. Really? I think the average American consumer wants hybrid cars, not fully electric cars. Hybrid cars have been like more hybrid cars are being sold now than electric vehicles. Oh, 100%. It's yeah. just much more convenient and you're able to still drive it. You don't have to rely on 
the lackluster charging infrastructure. You can just go and like fill up at a, a gas station and get great gas mileage. Yeah. So I think like one of the ones that's been really popular is the the hybrid F one fifty. Oh really? Yeah. So they have hybrid models of most of their vehicles, and those have been the ones that have been pretty pretty popular. You know what though? This makes sense because I have read comments saying that people aren't ready to make the full transition mm -hmm. to electric because of the lack of charging stations yeah. readily available. And the thing is that if people are making trips that are over like 300 miles um, without any charging stations readily av available, um, they do not want to they do not want to inconvenience themselves mm -hmm. with that. I think additionally, people are now seeing the the cost of owning a electric vehicle mm -hmm. in terms of like repairs, and the repairs can be pretty pretty hefty if the batteries go bad. Effectively, it's like for Tesla is like sixteen thousand dollars to replace a battery pack, and some other battery or other electric vehicle manufacturers have like quote even higher to replace it. I do. I did hear that it's similar for Tesla. I did hear that about Tesla. Like once the battery goes out of warranty, then it's like you're essentially buying like a used car. Yeah. Um, replacing that battery. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is like, like I mentioned before, um, Ford last month confirmed it would cut planned production of the F-150 Lightning mm -hmm. roughly in half. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like if you look at the demand or like the type of um, projections that people were having for electric vehicles, based on the 2020, 2021, and even 2022 model years, mm -hmm. the demand was, was there. And I feel like if you're projecting um, demand based on those years for the trucks and, and electric vehicles in general then these projections for like, oh, we need this many, like double the amount that they're producing right now, you know? Yeah. And we need a whole new plant. The The demand's going to be crazy. And then come to find out that all the people who wanted electric vehicles got electric vehicles. Yeah, they did. And so now they're who's left. Like That's true. That's true. The thing is that Ford's spokesman actually came out and said that the F-150 Lightning is America's best-selling electric pickup after a record fourth quarter. It only took one quarter to... It to yeah, to have hmm. this record. But think about this. The Cybertruck wasn't out yet, effectively. It's still not out. Yeah. Yeah, the Rivian, for the for the most part, is not like in mass it, production. It's being produced, it's but being... Not, not like... I think Rivian actually lost our stock went heavily down because they kept, they missed projections in terms of how many they were going to produce. Yeah. Um, there's one appealing thing about this Ford F-150, by the way, that if you, you stay buy th it. if you stay this long, by the way, if mm -hmm. you stay this long, and if you're thinking of buying a Ford F-150, yeah. the Ford F-150 Lightning is one of a limited number of vehicles that will maintain the $7,500 federal tax credit. Oh, okay. So another yeah. $10,000 discount. Yeah. This is in accordance with a more stringent requirement for the assembly and, and materials for the vehicle and their batteries that took effect January 1st, 2024. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Gasp. it's it's good that you at least could get like a like a tax break on this no car. no no they they increased the price to absorb all that's that that's true that's true they did they like, did oh we can increase the price and then they're gonna go and use the tax break to then lower it back down to the original cost yeah that's true they still want to make a profit on this car mm -hmm. but yeah um i'd want to know from our audience uh if they were if if they like the ford f-150 lightning if they ever considered getting an electric truck doesn't have to be the ford f-150 lightning but if they consider getting the cyber truck or the rivian truck or any of these other ones <laughs> i saw you nod your head for rivian yeah but i mean the rivian's like probably the cool one the cool one okay I, yeah okay just yeah i mean like you, if i had an extra like bazillion dollars to spend on they're so expensive all these cars are so expensive except for those of you who stayed this long, check the used market. The oh used market, the God. depreciation that we're seeing right now, 
Uh, all used cars have hit, taken a hit, but especially on these electric cars that they're still within warranty. So like one or two years old yeah. are being hit pretty hard. So you can get a nice, um, like fully loaded Rivian or fully loaded car that for a lot of depreciation at this point. Yeah, but the insurance would be insane. Really? To to cover your car? But it's you're only paying like yeah. a lot less than that, so you don't wouldn't yeah, need as okay. much probably. I, well, I, then yeah, again, I, I mean, know. for those of you who stayed this this long, the the cost for insurance on like Teslas and other things have, is actually quite high because it, yeah. it costs so much to repair. Yeah, that's why yeah. the Rivian trucks would be so expensive. They, You're adding on top of that. Rivian trucks are very expensive to repair. Yes, it, they effectively have to like go back to the factory. Uh, they're like chop off a large portion of like the body to like replace it. Oh so my it's God. it's pretty wild. Like they get they get um uh, what is it totaled pretty fast. Oh my god! Even if it's like yeah. a minor thing, because of like how difficult it is to repair, the insurance would be through the roof. Like, let me just tell you that. And if, yeah. if you're in our, if you're <laughs> watching this and you're thinking about this, think of the insurance. I'd still. I mean, if it was like a minor dent, I'd probably still drive it. I'd it like, no a, yeah, yeah. I'm not calling my insurance for no. a minor dent. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no. But yes, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.